there yet, by the way. We're not there yet. Setting the scene here. Okay. Think you all know where we are. So, just out of town. Our expert is 70 years old, so the There's big the concern mill. isn't getting us up there. About 100 yards. Big concern is getting Miss Rich up. She's gonna need him. Okay. So, um, but these snowshoes here are for Bev, so we need to come back down here and maybe do a quick read or whatever. Yeah. And then. Uh, quick read or greet? Greet. Yeah. How much time do we have? We have, she's going to be here at 9.15, and it is 9.10. 9.10, okay, well she'll be here. Well, should we so start? why don't I take uh, somebody up with me and we'll just walk the trail. Why, don't we all why can't we all just it? go up there? Then yeah. Because, yeah. We'll, because we'll meet Bev here. And uh, what's your name, Russ? Russ is a good game. I think it's going to be fine. Hi. I'm not even worried. It's only 100 yards. <laughs> Okay, little schoolers, let's do a little oval right here. Oval! I want to hear a, a, a fact or a question or something you're curious about. Also, start looking up here. Come out of the snow, David. You want to keep your feet Hi, as warm and as dry as possible. Echo, join us. Carlos, Matthew. Hi, Kaden. Come into our little oval, please. I want to be in the camera, too. Hi. Be aware. Echo, come into the oval. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, pop question. Mm. Or here, rather, I spy the powerhouse station. I spy. Can you? Which I one spy. Is the closest one. No, it's right here. It's the one right. So you would do the aspen tree on the right, that little one. That's the power station. What's inside of it? Daniela, what's one thing inside of it? Turbine. A turbine. What's one other thing inside of it, Caden? Yes. Another what is ahead. one other thing the inside of the here. power station besides a turbine? Water. Something that the turbine feeds into. A generator. A generator. Go ahead and open up your notebooks. Hey Matthew, when I'm talking I yeah. need you to listen. Open up your notebooks. Go to where you have notes and questions. And while we're waiting, I just want to hear from each of you either your character goal or academic goal, and one <laughs> note or question that you have so far. Kaden, you're ready. Start us off. What? One goal, one note or question. Oh, so I can see my goal then, a note or question. Yes. Okay. One goal, one note or question. Uh, I said my, epi my epi the academic goal was to illustrate a great picture of the hydropower plant. And then I had a question about um, what's the difference between mega and watts? Which now we know, which is what? Mega, <coughs> mega is a thousand times greater. Yeah. Okay, which one do you want to send it? That way. Okay. Um, my academic goal was to have high quality notes of time. Oh, no, and I know it was uh, FERC, Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. Great. Otherwise known as? FERC. 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 Daniela, what to say? Um, academic goal is, is will, will be me in the notebook by showing organization and asking two questions. And one of my things is that Mayflower Mill was the first to follow up. Small hydro, Small. otherwise known as micro hydro. Which does anyone remember how many watts it has to put out? Less than so many watts. Five. No, five. Sixty-five. So we don't remember. Does anyone have the article with them? I have. Eleven. I do. It was eleven. Eleven. It's eleven. It's eleven. eleven. This one puts out eleven. But what does it take to be considered small hydro? One five. I know. It's five. It's megawatts. <laughs> okay, great. So yeah, small hydro is less than five megawatts. Sweet. Thanks for having us. Good question, Daniela. Good job, Jaden, you're up. Alyssa, Carlos, this is a great opportunity to practice respectful listening. It's not by picking up snowballs, it's just by looking at your classmate, paying them the respect they deserve by being an active listener. Go ahead, Jaden. Uh, my character goal is like to be polite, and then one of my goals is like to have much hydro power that is 11 kilowatts generated. Great. Yeah, and where does that power go? 
Literally, what's the link between the pipe? I don't want to be on camera, Pa. <laughs> Too good a shot. Crazy, huh? Too good a shot right there. Uh -huh. That's a great shot. Y'all coming up the hill there. That's too good to pass up. Pull this together, but you now know that we had to go all the way to the President of the United States to change legislation so that we could do something like this. So, let the other floor. <coughs> okay. First of all, I want to tell you that you are really in the cradle of the history of ultimately hydroelectricity. That um, the first hydroelectric plant was built just under the mountain at Coulter, which is a little town outside of Telluride, and it was the very first one in the whole world. And it was built by a man named L. O. Nunn, who had a lot of uh, business interests in the Telluride area, uh, especially in the mines. And he was finding it was getting harder and harder to get power to his mines to keep them money and his mills to keep them money because uh, the fuel that they used was for trees. And pretty soon they had cut down all the trees around Telluride and Ophir. And so he started looking into the to technology. He thought about hydropower. And there were two kinds of uh, electricity at that time. There were direct current and alternating current. And um, direct current was the one that was uh, uh, prepared by Thomas Edison to be the right kind of electricity to use. The only problem was that it didn't travel well over uh, wires. It, didn't, it lost its power pretty easily. So Aaron then called his brother in New York and said, well, what are we going to do? And he said, well, you know, there's a man named George Westby. And you might recognize that name. You might even have a refrigerator or a, or a washer and dryer set from Westby House. And uh, he had just been dabbling in a new technology called alternating current. So Ella Nunn invited him to come to Ophir and build an alternating current hydro And he did in 1890. <laughs> and it proved to be the savior of the mining industry. Well, within a year, they had stone wires put over the Silverton. And so, in reality, we were the second town in the world in the world, before New York City, before Mexico City, before London, to get alternating current to light up our lights. And that was huge. That was huge. So we are uh, pretty famous in, in the world about that. So, yeah, second time in the world for alternating current. Right. 
you have to remember, well, you don't have to remember, because you're, you're not a boy, but uh, there were a lot of places, when I was a little girl even, out in rural uh, United States, that didn't have power. But still, in the 1950s, they didn't have power. And so this is huge. Silverton was way far ahead of its time. And so, <clears throat> that what was that? 1890. So, in the historical society, got this mill, it was given to us by Sunnyside Gold Corporation. And uh, Sunnyside was shutting the mine down in 1991, and they were going to tear down this mill. So we thought, oh no, that can't be true, there are many mills left. So we went to Sunnyside and asked them if they would give us the milk. And that sounds pretty easy. Oh, sure, here's the key. But we had to go through a lot of research to see if we could actually, a little bit of historical society could take on such a huge complex. And the other thing is, it had practiced chemical separation of metals for over 50 years. And so we had to take, we had to do a lot of research into seeing whether we could put on what could possibly be a hazardous waste site. And after about five years of studying and about, uh, we hired one of the very best water law firms in the United States who looked for us for free. And the link to that is pro bono. And they worked for us pro bono because they thought it was so interesting. And we finally decided after five years that we could take this giant complex on and uh, save it for people like you to see because they're just running and they're being wet. They pull them all down. So we were able to take the mill. Now, along with the mill, we got the water rights from Araska Creek. And that's Alaska Gulch out there, where the film goes up. And there's a creek that comes down there. And some of you might have actually gone fishing there. Um, and um, when the mill was running, they used a lot of water. Water was the medium by which they made concentrates, like uh, zinc concentrates and lead concentrates and all of that sort of thing. The crushed up metal. And uh, so it was a fair amount of water rights that we have in Alaska Creek. There was also an existing water line. And so uh, it was in pretty bad shape in places, I can tell you that. We had geysers and everything else. But through the years, the mine had made repairs and all that to uh, keep the water flowing. <coughs> Well, when we first got the mill, I remember our board of directors took a walk. It was about this time of year because there was snow on the ground. And we came out here and we said, we've got to do these water rights. Because if we don't, we're going to lose them. <clears throat> and in the West, the whole Western United States, water is really important. In fact, they've been the fight for the water. And so we decided if we, if we didn't use our water rights, that we might lose them, so we better use them. So that was when we thought, you know, we ought to put in a little hydro plant. And one of the reasons we wanted to do that is because in the mill, now it's a tour, and we run a, a cash register and a credit card machine and a few lights. But it was still costing us about six hundred dollars a month just to turn the lights on. Yeah. So I'm already starting my illustration a little bit. All I have is just that there's the Alaska Gulf over there. That there's a water line that was already in place. And then there's two thoughts: water rights. Who's going to lose them? Right. Also, how much money goes it there each month? Keep it on the right. Six hundred dollars a month for electricity at the mill. Yeah, and that's 
Can I say something? Yeah. So look at his Rajas. He's got a lot of facts. So when it comes time for her to summarize, it's going to be very easy. She's going to have a lot of information. She's not going to have to draw on memory. Okay? That's what she should be doing. Pick up what Deb's saying. So anyway, we got Well, we, we would really like to put in a, a little of hydroelectric tank because that could offset our electric bill at the mill because the mill was designed to be a whole bunch of rock and a whole bunch of coal. And it wasn't designed to be a tool. So that is one of our uh, motivations for trying to put in a hydro plant. Well, you know, we're, <clears throat> our, my group is an all-volunteer group, and certain things will, certain projects will rise to the top that need your attention. And so for about 10 years, we really didn't do anything about it, because we had other projects to do. Like we built our new museum, for instance. And so <clears throat> finally, legislation was passed in the state of Colorado that required big electrical companies um, like Excel out of Denver and uh, San Miguel Power to use at least 20% of renewable energy in their distribution system. Well, all of a sudden, that opened things up because power companies are they're really slow to change. They don't like change very much, partly because they have contracts that they have to sign with these big coal producers and stuff for 50 years ahead. And so they don't like to change very much. And so it's, it's a little bit interesting to work with the power companies. But now that we have this law that they have to use alternative energy, like solar or hydro, or wind, 20% of their distribution had to be from um, uh, alternative energy. So that was our opening to actually <clears throat> get the bank money to put this little hydro plant in. Now, the first thing we had to do was we had to do a feasibility study. And it was funded by the state of Colorado and it cost $50,000. And what that was to do was to see if we actually had enough water to run a plant like this. Did we have enough water here around to run a plant like this? And so we hired a company to come and um, do a bunch of measurements and GPSs and all that sort of thing. And they figured out, yep, we had plenty of water, we had plenty of flow. And uh, so we could run a water plant year around. And so then that opened up the next stage, which was to get a big grant. And it was the very first one ever handed out by the State Historical Fund. It was called a Sustainability Grant. And historic preservation historians like to reuse stuff. We don't like to tear stuff down and have to dispose of it. We think that reuse is very sustainable. We like using things in our downtowns instead of building clear way to have to out of town. And that's it. So, so anyway, this is a very good sustainability grant handed out by the State Historical Society. <laughs> and that was $160,000. And with that, one of the big things we did was we replaced about half of our water line. Because remember what I said? There were big holes in it. Well, it had been put in in 1929. There were big holes in it and stuff and there were geysers and in the winter you could see like big icicles and stuff. Was it a steel pipe? Well, you know, it, it was. It was a... Uh, Steel, mm -hmm. there's still remnants of it. And it actually um, laid on top of the ground, which was interesting. 
and some side of made repairs to it through the years. But uh, back half of it was still the original uh, 1929 steel pipe. And so we, uh, that, that two miles of pipe, and we replaced about one mile of it. We also did a bunch of work on our intake uh, box up above, which is where the water from the rest of the peak goes into a big box, and it has a big mesh screen on it to keep the rocks and the trees out, because there's a lot of avalanches up there. And so we have to have to cover up, and every spring we have to go and clean down all of the debris up there. We do a whole lot of things. <laughs> Maybe it's dry drop. And then um, we put in this little hydroelectric generator. And this thing generates eight kilowatts. And when we went to, because we're a really good stray barrel organization, we went by all the years until we got to the first year. Now, first was the Federal Energy Regulatory uh, Commission. And we were going to have to get a license to run this plant. And to get it, we had to, it was like we were going to build a burning van. <laughs> I mean, it was just incredible. Yeah. In fact, we had to get an architect to draw this building. This little thing. <laughs> and, uh, oh, just all kinds of things. And we were on the phone in conference calls with people in Washington, D.C. But so they could just watch. And they were, it was very, very difficult. And I'm not anti government by any means because I worked for the government for about 30 years. And I believe in the government. But this was really, really honest. And if we would have had to pay to get this license to, to go through the paperwork, it would have probably cost us around $50,000, which would have killed the project. We, we can have $50,000 to do that. As it was, we worked with a man called, uh, his name is Kurt Johnson, and he's with Telluride Energy. That's his company. And he did this for free for us, which is wonderful. So we decided to do go another year. We decided to lobby Congress and the Senate to change the law to exempt small hydro from uh, exempt small hydro from certain rules and uh, procedures that the normal big hydro electric cars would have to, to do. And so we were the poster child. We were able to testify in front of Congress. We finally got it through the House. And then the next year we got it through the Senate. And this was in some years that were very, it was very hard to get any legislation passed. And in fact, we got to be on the PBS News Hour for 15 whole minutes, and that's a lot to be on TV. Because the second of the, the piece was this was the only bipartisan legislation to be passed in six years. Wow. Yeah, pretty incredible. Wow. The Congress and Democrats together agreed to pass this legislation to make small hydro. Now that's what we're going to do. There is much money to be created. Right. right. So the law was finally passed in 2015, and we were able to be the very first group in the United States, the Historical Society, was the very first 
entity in the whole United States to, to get that first exemption to that rock, that small hydro rock. And so, I'm sorry to interrupt you, we've got about what, three minutes. We've got about three minutes. Oh, okay. Run over. Run over. So, the green goes, you can. And I have, I'll tell you what. Handouts for you, and they will tell you all about the names of the bills and uh, all of that. And so, if you go outside, I'll find you. Okay? You think you could yeah. take that with us? You think we can come back to the school and ask some questions? Okay. That, that's, let's do that, but just a quick explanation. Everybody, why don't you guys take three minutes to draw? So I'm guessing that. But listen, guys, for a second before you start drawing. So the water comes up the pipe right there, it comes through into this. Any, any guess what this is? This is the turbine. Okay? So it spins a little turbine. Not sure what it looks like in there, but that's where the turbine is. And this is the generator right next to it on this side. Okay? So pipe in, turbine generator. Okay, and that's where it goes. Where does the water go? The water then goes right straight up to the mill. Okay. And uh, some of the water goes right straight back into the river. So there must be a, another pipe underneath us that allows that. So the, wa the pipe water comes in, okay, turns the turbine, and some of it goes back to the river underneath us, and some of it goes up to the mill for use up in the mill. Right. Okay? And, and it turns the generator. There you yeah, go. And that's what fed is called. Fed is the, how high the water is. And the water has enough energy by the time it gets here that it can go through this turbine and then it's going to go up further than the net. Yep. So she's, the word she said is head, and you should know that. So we're here, we're pretty high up on the hill, aren't we? But it's even higher over there. So the water's going to come, and if it was just even higher, there wouldn't be any head. But the water on that side is this much higher, so there's that much head. And what that, what's that water want to do? All that water that's above us wants to come down. So that's what determines head. Gravity drives it. Converter. And the other thing is, every, every month now, we get a credit of about $127 instead of about $600 a day. You hear that? So instead of paying $600 for electricity, they're getting $127 a month because they're contributing electricity. So they're making more electricity than they actually need. Awesome. Right, All right. So you guys go ahead and take the time and draw yourself a good sketch. You might want to put the size of things and keep that in mind. And we, we can step out and then. Let's just say, yeah, people call me. Let's go from like, you know, we're going to go this way. Oh, you can stay there, but like, we can wait to go out there. That's how slippery the floor is. where it says reporter at the top of this trip reflection. And I have a picture actually, here I'll give you one too. So that might help you guys draw um, what we saw. 
<laughs> and then by the date, what is the date today? The 26th. The 26th. Mm. Put down January 26th, 2017. This is a picture of it without the eyes. <laughs> yeah, this is a warmer. It's warmer. <laughs> so by the who, where it says who, we want you to write down in your best handwriting and your most accurate spelling, complete sentences. We want you to write down who is, who are the people that made the hydroelectric plant happen? which we just put all up on the board. Yeah. So you can use the board or you can use your notes, yeah. okay? For the what, I want you to explain all the facts that you learned about the hydroelectric plant. So like the what is all the facts that you learned that don't apply to the who. So like facts about how much electricity it, it generates, facts about um, how it works, Facts about the, the history of how it came to be. So what is this electro plan? The where, I just want you to describe where it's located. So it's at the Mayflower Mill, right? But it gets water from the Arastra Gulch. Which one's higher in elevation? Arastra, Arastra Gulch. What force have we talked about that's responsible for momentum? Gravitational, Gravitational force, right? So the where really has to do with the head. It has to do with the fact that we get this momentum, this, um, let's see, we get this force, Newton's second law, this water accelerating, we get it because of gravitational force. When, when was this hydroelectric plant first going into action? What was the year where it's? 2013 was when we were able to get the exemption to the for licensing. It was the first one in the United States. Great. First in the US. So that's kind of the when. And I'd like you to be able to explain like what, what's the FERC exemption? Can anyone tell us what the FERC exemption means? What is the FERC exemption? Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. Good. And what did what changed from FERC? <coughs> what changed so that we could have this hydroelectric plant? Do you guys remember? What if you're a really big hydroelectric plant? Like Hoover Dam like or Niagara Falls. Hoover Dam or Niagara Falls. What kind of processes do you need to go through and what kind of costs? Oh, big I mean, huge environmental oh impact statements, studies, etc. Right, so it costs what, hundreds of thousands of dollars? Hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? But this FERC exemption made it so that small hydro, if you are putting out less than five, well, I can't what is it? In here. <laughs> it's in this article. If you're putting out less than, is it five? Five megawatts, right? If you're less than five megawatts, then you are considered small hydro, and you don't have to pay nearly as much money, and you don't have to go through as many hoops in order to get your power plant. So that was a big deal. Mm -hmm. Huge deal. And then why? For the why, I want you to write down why hydro? Why, why small hydro? What are the benefits of small hydro? And then down here it just says illustration, labeling, and explanation of how hydro works. So that would just be drawing a raster gulch, the pipe, the box where it collects the debris, and then it goes into the other pipe, which goes into the turbine, the generator, the converter. The confer converter goes out to all of the San Miguel power lines. But then what are the other, what are the other two places where the water goes? Water gets diverted oh, the mill, the river. The mill. to the mill or back to the river, right? Okay, so let's see. I'm going to see if we can extend our time a little bit so that you guys can have more class time to work on this instead of homework. I'm going to see if we can go to a quarter till. I really want you to be thinking about accuracy, completeness, and craftsmanship and making this high quality. You're going to turn this into me, and I'm going to assess you for high quality work, okay? 
So you'll get feedback on accuracy, completeness, and craftsmanship. And Bev is going to be here for like the next five minutes if you're working and you're having questions about how to make your work more accurate. Do you guys have any questions before we get started? Okay, once you guys get started working, I have a small incentive for you. I thought you guys did a really good job on field work. I thought it was cold and it was icy and slippery and the majority of you took a lot of notes and you were respectful listeners and I thought you did a really good job. So um, let's get started working. And Matthew and Echo, I'm gonna have you come to this middle table just to spread out, okay? Thank you.
so yeah, the what would be like where you could include things about direct current and alternating current, like what Bev was just talking about. So the alternating current, we were the second town in the world to have alternating current, which is just a really, it's stronger form of electricity that can travel longer distances. Um, another what would be that, what did we get besides the mill from Sunnyside Mine? Water rights. water rights. And what did Beth say about water rights? What happens if you don't use your water rights? They get taken away. You get take, they get taken away, right? It's like use it or lose it. Same thing with water rights. So that would be something that you could add in your what. Um, facts about how much it costs each, mo each month to power the mill versus how much credit now that the historical society gets. Those would be facts to include in your what. Um, oh, facts about the steel pipe, right? What kind of shape was the steel pipe in when the historical society got Terrible. the mill? Terrible holes. Geysers were coming out of it, like water was sprouting up. It was not an efficient pipe anymore. How, how long is the pipeline? Two miles. Two miles. How many miles did one mile. they need to repair? One mile. About one mile, one right, Beth? We replaced it with a, what is called Drisco pipe, which is a big plastic rubber kind of pipe. So does that mm -hmm. <coughs> We replaced about one mile, which is a job on that side of the mountain. A big job on that side of the mountain. Um, another thing would be that this story made its way to the PBS News Hour. That this, our little town of 500 people, it was 15 minutes on tea, but we kind of became the example for what other small towns that had a lot of water could do. Mm -hmm. And that's a really big deal because Silverton is small, it's isolated, um, it's rural, and it was a really big deal that Silverton, Colorado set, it's like I'm trying to think of a metaphor, like an analogy. I don't know. It's like if Matthew figured out a way to fly himself down to Durango for groceries. And then everyone in Silverton would be like, oh, I can construct this like paraglide system, and I can find a way to get down to Durango. So it's kind of a weird analogy, but what Silverton did was they said, we can have small hydro we can make money on small hydro. We have enough electricity to power about 10 homes. And this, this is really the why. Big power companies, like Bev said, they don't want to change. For power companies using coal, they want to keep using coal. Power companies using nuclear, they want to keep using nuclear. But this law made it so that 20%, one out of five, one fifth, of a power plant's electricity needed to be renewable energy, and it's a really big deal. And that was why power companies like San Miguel said, okay, Silverton, we'll take some of that electricity. Right. right. And now, in 2020, we're going to, they're going to be required to have 30% of their power from renewables. So that's another good thing. That's awesome. And it opens up new doors, it opens up new, um, new things for solar power and wind power as well as hydropower. Right. Geothermal. Geothermal. And like what Bev said too about it being carbon free. So when we think about the future of our planet and our planet and global warming, we want to find energy sources that are carbon free, that are contributing to greenhouse gases. And also, we know dams can be really bad for wildlife and for ecosystems. And this is not a dammed hydro plant. This is a sustainable, right. where the water goes right back into the watershed. Right. And the, the potential is so incredible because every town Every municipality, it doesn't matter how big or how small, has a water plant that 
so that you can go over to the faucet and get a drink or take a shower or whatever. And it's, those are reservoirs that are already there, and they could be making electricity. Every single one of them could be making electricity. Because there are turbines now that don't have to necessarily have a head, they have okay. movement. It's oh. fascinating. That once, you, once you get into the hydropower, it's really interesting. Head is good, but head and head is that water pressure from yeah, coming down fed by gravity. I'm going to try and draw. So we have a rastro. <coughs> you guys can keep working if you've got it. I'm just going to try and draw two so that I remember. And then we've got over here. Down the trail for me. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey Bev. Hey Bev from Arastra Gulch. Where is the um? So the pipeline crosses the creek, right? Yeah. And then where is the box where the debris? It's clear. Where is that Arastra Gulch? Okay. The my box is clear up here. Okay. And the water just kind of goes through slide, slide rock and turns into a little creek that gradually gets bigger. So the box is about in here. Okay. And every year, avalanches come down on it, and so we have to go up in the spring and clean it out, clean it off. And then the, here we have this pipeline, right? Mm-hmm. We have a, in this, we have a pipeline that comes all the way down and crosses the Animus River. Uh -huh. and goes up to the mill. And then I always like doing these boxes. So if you looked inside of the power station, <coughs> you would have the pipe coming in here. Over here is the converter, right? Mm And then the pipe comes up kind of from the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then this was the turbine. And then this was the generator. And then how does the generator connect to the converter? To the how does the generator connect to the converter? Well, I guess there are power lines in here okay. somehow. That and then, would be a good question for Danny Kurtz, because he was the one who installed all that stuff. Okay. And then from the generator, there's two more pipes. No, from the turbine. Mm-hmm. Under the turbine, there's two more pipes. <coughs> and one of them goes up to the mill. Mm-hmm. One of them goes down to the river. And then this converter goes out to a power line, which I forgot to show you, that mm -hmm. it hooks in with San Miguel's power grid. And then it's, and it's, a, it's eight kilowatts mm -hmm. per, is that like eight kilowatts per day or per week or per month or, you know, have to look on we'll have to look on here. Okay, yeah, we'll look. Okay, um, can you guys please say, Let's just give Bev a round of applause because if we Bev is 66 years old and if we are become 66 years old and are still hiking up in snowpack snow on unplowed roads and talking to middle schoolers about something we know about town, I think we'd all be, well we'd be doing awesome. So thank you so much, Bev, oh, you're welcome. for being here and for being our expert. And I always love talking to you guys. And maybe what we'll do, Bev, is we'll um, find a way to share our reflections with you once they're done. That would be wonderful. Maybe I'll put them in a little book or something and you can send them your way. It would be great. Can we fold these? We're going to keep working for five more minutes, so don't fold it. Okay. No, those are for you. We can keep them? Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you so much, Bev. Bye. Bye.